Hello, hello. I hope that all is well. This is Adelaide Brown, your heart coach, and I want to thank you so much for logging on to Heart Talk this evening. Heart Talk is our weekly women's empowerment call where strong women from all over the country call in to renew their minds and restore their hearts. And I'm really excited about tonight's call because tonight we're talking about, we're still talking about living out of the box. Last week we talked about living out of the box and we're still talking about living out of the box. But tonight we're going to focus a little bit more in on what living out of the box really means for us. And I'm really excited about it. Um, I was prompted by this title. The title of tonight's call is Enlarge Your Hood. <laughs> Enlarge Your Hood, as in like neighborhood, but in, enlarge your hood. And I was inspired by um, Bishop T.D. Jakes because I was listening to his sermon on March the 3rd. And it was called, um, I forgot, it's called Faith, Faith Something. I forgot what it was called, but... He, he, was, he used that term. And so tonight we're going to be talking about enlarging our territory. Still living out of the box like we talked about on last week. But I, I really want to talk about like what that really means for your life. What that really means for you. And how you can live out of the box. So just kind of keep that in mind. I want to make a few quick announcements first. First I want to um, thank you for logging on tonight. I know it's a Monday night, it's 9.15, and if your life is anything like mine, it's a hectic time at any time to get on a conference call or do any type of studying or learning. And so the fact that you're here tonight, I want to thank you. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you and just let you know that this is a safe space for you to let your burdens down. I like to say this is a time for us to kick off our girdles kick off our heels, take that bra and that wig off, and just be comfortable. And if anybody has ever worn any of those things, you know how comfortable it can get when you start to take those things off. So just kind of think about this as a safe, comfortable space. Nobody's judging you. Everything that's shared with you is shared in love. And um, I want you to really take some time to reflect on your life. Also, you have a friend, a co-worker, a mentee, a mentor that you think could benefit from Heart Talk. Take some time right now and send them the information. You can also send them my YouTube page because I'm live right now on YouTube. So if they won't, don't want to call in, but they might want to watch me on a video, you can tell them to go to theheartconnections.com and click the YouTube button at the bottom. It looks like a um, play button. Like if you're pressing play, an arrow facing to the right, you can click that button and it'll bring you directly to me live right now. And if you want to see me live, if you want to see what I look like, I know people tease me a lot about my facial expressions when I'm doing heart talk, but if you want to check me out live on YouTube, I encourage you to, and please share the information with everyone else. If this is not your first time, I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for continuing to log in, and um, I just thank you. So um, another thing is the call is muted, but you can press star six to unmute your phone. And when you finish speaking, I just ask that you press star six again so that it will mute your phone back. So we don't get any background noise from anyone um, so everyone can hear clearly. And if there's ever a time where you're not hearing me, please send me a text message to my phone, those, you know, and let me know, send me a message so that I can see that because a lot of times, I think I'm being heard. So I've had people do that in the past. I just wanted to put that out there. Make, I want to make a few quick announcements. First, I want to remind you all about our upcoming event. I'm really excited about it because this is the first Women's History Month event that Heart Connections and Be Blessed Daily has ever sponsored. And we're going to be honoring some very special women who have been along this journey of life Um with me and with many others. The name of the event is Hearts That Shine. And um, registration is only $30 and that does include your meal. There are going to be vendors there. We're going to have an award ceremony to honor our, um, our nominees, I guess I should say. We're going to have games. We're going to have some giveaways. And everything is going to be designed to love on women. We are always loving on everybody else. And I just wanted to take some time to love on you guys. So I just want to encourage you um, to register. And if you have a girlfriend, a sister, a co-worker, somebody who you think would 
benefit from being loved on. Maybe they're always taking care of everybody else and nobody and, and they're never really receiving that. I encourage you to buy them a ticket, like and get them admission to, to come. And you come out as well. I can promise you you will not be disappointed. It's gonna be a great time. The registration will be for tickets are sold or until March fifteenth. I'm thinking it might not make it to March fifteenth because tickets are selling pretty well. My vendors are excited about it. We're gonna have so many different things so be ready to shop you know us ladies love our new things and we're going to have a lot of things a lot of products and services there that i feel like us women can really enjoy and benefit from so even the vendors are going to be fun it's just going to be a lot of fun so make sure you register you can go to the website and register you can go to a short link and um register just go to bit dot lee b-i-t dot l-y backslash heart connect events heart connect events and it will take you directly to that link and um and i will be sending out information and updating you guys about it as we go forward but like i said it's going to be a wonderful time and we're just really looking forward to it now um last but not least i just want to remind you if you have not gotten a copy of my new book help save me from my broken heart your journey to living and loving again. I would like to encourage you to get that copy because this book is life changing, life tra life transformational, and I just feel like everyone can benefit from it. Men, women can all benefit from it because it's just such a blessing. And that's just not what I'm saying because I wrote it. That's what that's the feedback that I've been getting about the book, and I'm really thankful for that. So I encourage you to get your copy. You can get it on my website at theheartconnections.com. Or you can also get it at, excuse me, you can also get it on Amazon or all of your other major book retailers. If you just type in help, exclamation point, save me, it usually pops right up. So I encourage you to do that. And also, I would like to stay in touch with you. Um, I know that some people get on Heart Talk, but I don't really have other connections with you. So I would love to send you emails and some encouragement. And if you're interested in that, I encourage you to sign up for my email list. You can go to the website, theheartconnections.com. And if you look to the right, you will see um, where you can sign up for the seven days of opportunity. And it's seven days of free heart coaching coming directly to your inbox. And it's just taking you through seven days of opportunity for you to transform your life. And it's all free. You can share it with others. Um, you can go to the website, theheartconnections.com, and register there. Or you can just go to bit.ly backslash heartops, H-E-A-R-T, heartop, O-P-P, for opportunity, heartop. And you get those emails sent directly to your inbox, as well as other updates that I send about heart talk. Um, my weekly blog, I do a weekly blog on my website as well. You can get notifications about that. And it's just me wanting to offer more, more services and more options to be able to help and serve you all and, all and those who are in need. Because we all need it in some way, shape, or form. So I just really um, encourage you to go to my website. You can get all of that information on my website, theheartconnections.com. And I thank you all for your time. I'm going to go ahead and get us open up in prayer and we'll move forward in the call. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now, Lord, thanking you for this opportunity to be in your presence once again. Lord, we come with open hearts and open minds ready to receive your will and your way. Lord, we welcome you into this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move in our hearts, move in our minds, move in our lives right now. Heal our families, Lord. Heal Heal our communities, Lord. Heal our hoods. Show us what our hood is in the name of Jesus. Show us what you want us to do, how you want us to do it, Father. And bless us to walk by faith. Bless us to not think that you showing us is going to be a literal thing. But a lot of times it's just going to be us having to trust that small, still voice of the Holy Spirit nudging us along. But, Father, we thank you for the Spirit. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for being all-knowing and all-powerful. And right now, Lord, we pray that those of us that come on confused, that we can leave with clarity. That those of us that have come on heavy, that we can leave light. Those that came on in chaos in their mind. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for peace. And we rebuke that spirit of anxiety 
and depression right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I pray that as we go through this call tonight, that you soothe our souls. You say that you restore our souls. You are the lover of our soul. How sweet is that? How sweet is that, Lord? And we thank you for doing that, Lord. Teach us how to receive your love in whatever form it may be coming in from whoever you may be sending it to us through. Father, teach us how to receive your love and not reject it. Lord, we give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Again, like I said earlier, I am live on my YouTube page. So if you want to look me up at The Heart Connections on YouTube, or you can go to my website, theheartconnections.com, and click the YouTube button at the bottom. It'll take you directly to my YouTube page. So if you want to see me on video as well as listen, you can do that as well on the YouTube page tonight. Okay, so tonight we're talking about, um, the title of tonight's call is Enlarge Your Hood. Enlarge Your Hood. And it is, like I said, it was inspired, the title itself was inspired by a sermon that I listened to yesterday by Bishop T.D. Jakes. It was such a blessing to me. That particular sermon was such a blessing to me. And um, it gave me a lot of um, insight on some things that I have going on in my life and some relationships that I have going on. And I was able to really have some peace about some things. First of all, let me just say this. This weekend, my mom and I went on a vacation. My mom and I and her friend went on a vacation to Washington, D.C. It was a very quick vacation. We left Saturday night. We got, um, we came back yesterday afternoon. Well, Friday night, we came back yesterday afternoon. And we went to go celebrate my auntie's 90th birthday. When I got there, I found out that my aunt was like a modern-day hidden figure. My aunt used to be a chemist in the lab for the USDA. Back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, my aunt was literally working in a lab testing food and things of that nature to see the type of dietary, um, like what is in the food, what type of calories are in the food, what type of vitamins and nutrients are in the food. Those, those labels that we read on the side of food, she would have been one of those people to help them figure out what, what level of salt is in here, how much sugar is in here. I thought that was absolutely amazing. She was working in that lab as a black woman when she couldn't even live in Washington, D.C. because she was a black woman. And her husband was an OBGYN back then, and they both worked in Washington, D.C., but because of um, racism and prejudice and, and whatever was going on at that time, they weren't even allowed to live in the city, but they worked there. So she, um, she helped build the careers of people who went on to do amazing things and she couldn't even do a lot of the things because she was black. So she helped people who got promoted over her. She helped them get those things and those accolades. I just think that that's absolutely amazing. Like, I I never knew. They never talked about these things. And um, it just was very uplifting. Uh, we also got a chance to see my 93-year-old uncle. And both of them are very sharp and in their right minds. And it just was such a blessing. I have been taking that trip my entire life, and I think that was the best one I had. I got to, got to see my uncle and my cousins, my auntie, um, another one of my sister cousins. But I, I think that my highlight of the trip was just my time with my mother. Um, she and I have had a very um, rocky past, like many others. You know, moms and children can go through things, but we just had a wonderful time together and i just really thank god for that this weekend and i just wanted to share that with y'all because i feel like it ties into when we talk about enlarging our territory and enlarging our hood and for those of you who have your bibles i'm going to be coming from isaiah 54 i'm going to be bouncing around but that's like the base scripture for tonight's call isaiah 54 and um you know and i say that because my mom and I, I prayed because my mom and I, it doesn't take anything in the past. It hasn't taken anything much for us to just argue and fuss with each other. Like, we, it, it can be so petty. And I'm saying petty or even on my end um, because we just had to learn how to have more patience with each other and grace with each other. 
and and to take it a step further i think we didn't have patience and grace with each other in a lot of situations because we didn't have patience or grace for ourselves individually but on this trip we had a great time and we enjoyed others and it was just so laid back everything went so well i mean even the drive we didn't run into any traffic going or coming i mean we might have sat in traffic for 10 minutes 15 minutes the max the whole trip like god was in the midst but when you talk about enlarging your territory and when you talk about growing a lot of times when people think that um it, a lot of times when people think that you're talking about enlarging your territory, immediately they, they go to thinking, you know, I have to do more work. I have to do more things. I know for me, that's what I would think about. But even when I think about what happened on the trip this weekend with me and my mom, when I think about enlarging my territory, God put me in a position where I had to enlarge my hood, my territory, the thoughts that I had about how how productive and how fulfilling my relationship could be with my mother had to be enlarged because this weekend it it pushed out all of the limitations that I was putting on what she and I could do in a relationship well I don't know if we could ever get along like that or I don't know if we could ever do this my territory my mindset had to be enlarged to see that yes that could actually happen and it did and so when I talk about enlarging your territory, I don't want you to just zero in on physical land. I'm not saying you got to get a bigger house. I mean, maybe God is leading you to do that, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you need to, you know, quit your job and start a new business. I'm not saying that. Maybe that's what God is leading you to. If not, no, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is you need to expand your thoughts about the possibilities of what can happen in your life. What am I trying to say? You got to walk by faith. You're going to have to live by faith. What I saw this weekend, then I'm just using my mom and I, and I didn't even I didn't even plan to talk about this. So mommy, I I would have talked to you about this if I knew I was going to talk about it, but I didn't plan to talk about it. But I I have prayed for my mom and I to have a better relationship and this weekend, I feel like I was in a space where I was open to it. Before, I would be like, oh boy, we're going to be in this car. I know we're going to be fussing all the time. And I believe like that's why those things happen. But this time, I was going into it like, we're going to have us a great time. This is going to be a great trip. And that's exactly what happened. Now, does that happen like that every single time? No, it doesn't. But I believe that the expectation... Being open to that, having an expectation for better things to take place in your life, having an expectation for breakthrough to happen in your life, having an expectation for things to go from dysfunctional to functional, from things to go from broken to fixed, from things to go from sick to being healed, for things to go from chaotic to peaceful. See, a lot of times things can't change in our life because our perspective is too small. We only see pe these people doing these things that we don't want them to do or we can't stand for them to do. And when they continue to do them, we get upset. But really, they're only giving us what we're expecting from them. So it's time for us to enlarge our territory. It's time for us to enlarge our hoods. And so um, you might be in a position right now in your life where you're like, I can't do this. It's something else I got to do. That's fine. But my question to you is, what? where is God challenging you to enlarge your hood? For me, one thing was, I, um, I had to enlarge my expectation of what could take place in my relationship with my parents. And as I have done that, I am starting to see those changes. I believe, personally, that a, a, a big part of why those changes weren't happening years ago... Yes, we've all grown, but I believe I'm going to make it about me. A lot of it was I got what I was expecting. I expected us to be dysfunctional. I expected us to always, whatever we always do, and that's what we kept doing. And it was the same thing in my marriage. If I always expect certain things of my husband, especially things that I don't want, why would I be surprised when it happens? It's just like women who you don't want your man to cheat, right? But all you do is accuse him of cheating. And then you're surprised when you find out he's cheating. And I've heard many men, and I'm using this as an example, 
because I just feel like a lot of people can relate to this. But I've heard many men say I wasn't cheating, but she she accused me of it so much. I ended up I say, hey, I'm gonna be in trouble. I might as well get in trouble for actually doing something. And I know for some people. That might sound very petty and they'll say, oh no, you did that because you wanted to do it. But no, I need you to understand the power that you have. I need you to understand the power in your thoughts as well as your actions, as well as your words. And I need you to understand that many, we are living the lives that we expect to live. If you're struggling, I can promise you, you expect that struggle. You, you have associated and attached your identity with struggle. And that's why struggle continues to happen. And I can tell you because that's the work I've been doing on myself. And God is showing me that. And when I was listening to the sermon last yesterday, last night, I've listened to it now about three times. All I keep, all I keep hearing when he talked about how God is going, you're going to have to enlarge your territory. And he was coming from the story of the Good Samaritan, Right. He was talking about how, with the story of the Good Samaritan, the, the person who helped the Jewish man was not Jewish. He was actually a Samaritan, and Samaritans hated Jews. I think about that as like black and white in this country. Samaritans and Jews did not get along. The Jews felt like they were better than the Samaritans. And so when the Jewish priest came by, he didn't help the man in the, in the story of the Good Samaritan. When, like, the deacon came by, he didn't have to help the man. And both of these people would be considered a part of this, this man's hood or territory, so to speak, right? But then the Samaritan came along and helped him, which was outside of his vicinity of hood, of territory. It was out of his jurisdiction. He was used to dealing with Jewish people, but the one group of people that he did not ever deal with his help and his savior came from people that he doesn't deal with. Things that he doesn't deal with. I would even go so far to say a person who he felt was beneath him just because of their ethnicity. Okay? So when we talk about enlarging our territories, I'm not just talking about a physical territory you need to enlarge. I'm talking about you have to enlarge your perspective of your life. But most of all, you're going to have to enlarge your perspective of God. And one of the only ways you're going to enlarge your perspective of God is by stepping out and walking by faith. Okay? Let's keep that in mind. One of the only ways you're going to do that is by walking by faith. And I'm going to explain what walking by faith is all about. But um, before I do that, I'm going to read the scripture. I'm going to read the scripture for tonight. And the scripture for tonight is... Isaiah chapter 54, and I'm going to read the first few verses, and then I'm going to read at the end. I don't, I'm, I don't know if I want to read the whole chapter. I might, but we'll see. Just, just, just be patient with me. It says, Isaiah 54, and I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge, verse 2, the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your, your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Okay, that was, that's verse, so that's verse 1 through 5. Now, I'm going to go down to verse 16 and 17. So it says, see, it is I. He says, see, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. And no weapon forged against you will prevail. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, 
And this is your vindication from me, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Isn't that such a blessing? He says, he created the blacksmith who fans the coal into the flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who created the destroyer to wreak havoc. The Lord says, hey, I know they're destroying things. I've created them. I get it. I know they're destroying things. I created them. Yep. But guess what? No weapon formed against you shall prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. So now let's go back. When you start enlarging your territory, right? Because at the beginning of this, he says, Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Burst into song. Shout for joy, you who were never in labor. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. So why? So what is he commanded her to do? So, so he's talking, he's saying to this barren woman, have you ever felt barren? Have you ever felt like you couldn't produce anything? I have, I have had the, the, I want to say the pleasure, but I don't want it to be taken the wrong way. I just know that my heart is in a very sincere place when I say the pleasure. I don't delight in, I'll say the honor, I guess. I don't delight in people experiencing infertility, having fertility difficulties. I have had the opportunity to be um, in very close proximity with some friends and co-workers who have had fertility struggles. And um, being someone, coming from someone who has been very fertile in her lifetime and being around and, and, not, and not happy about it. And then being around people who... We're just hoping they could just get pregnant. I mean, it really, really will humble you. And it, 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 it humbled me. It made me start to appreciate my body more, my womb. It made me start to appreciate being able to birth children because every time I ever got pregnant, it wasn't quote-unquote accident. And it wasn't like I ever planned it. And I was never happy about being pregnant when I first found out I was pregnant. And then to be around women who would just give anything to be able to get pregnant the way I was so easily able to get pregnant. I mean, it really, really forced me to start. I mean, these things started really changing my life when I started seeing, like, things that I take for granted, how much some people just really wish they could have my problem. They wish that that was a problem that they have. Have you ever thought about that? Things that you take for granted. Some people, some problems that you have in your life, they are people who wish they could have your problems kids getting on your nerves somebody wish they had a child that can get on their nerve you know um you're you know you might not feeling like working out somebody wish they had legs and arms so they could get up and work out you know these are things we don't often think about so when we talk about sing barren woman this isn't just for women having babies everybody doesn't want a baby but what if you feel barren in your finances what if you feel barren in your relationships what if you feel like you can't get any fruit what if you're tired of being single or what if you're married and you're tired of being married? You feel like you're in a barren, dry, deserted place. What if you're, you know, on this job and it's like you can never get promoted? What I mean, you just feel barren. When we think about barren, I'm going to read you the definition of barren. But I just, I want you to understand. I don't want you to hear this and say, well, I don't want no baby. I'm not enlarging my territory. I'm telling you, whatever it feels like you're lacking, you don't have. That's a place that you're barren. To be barren says, too poor to produce much or any vegetation. Bleak and lifeless. That's barren. A lot of times when we're depressed, that's a barren feeling. A lot of times when we're going through things and, and it seems like attacks are coming against us, it feels like we're too poor to produce. Sometimes we, we're too weak to fight back. Sometimes we don't feel up to that. So when I talk about um, being in a barren place. I want you to understand all of us have been in a barren place. It might not be in your womb, but all of us have been in some type of barren place. And so he says, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. So what he's saying is, I want you to get excited because you who have been barren is gonna you're gonna produce more than those who seem like they already have what you want. 
okay? But the only way you're going to be able to get it is you're going to have to prepare for it, okay? So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about preparing for it. How do you prepare for it? Back to the title of the talk. You have to enlarge your hood. This says enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the left and to the right. Your descendants will disp dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Well, Adley, I can't spread out because I don't have it. And in, in, in the house that God told me I was going to have, somebody just bought it. He said, for you will spread out to the right and left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. So you have to prepare for God to do what he's going to do in your life. And the only way you can do that is if you enlarge your tent. Now, I'm going to go back to the, I used the example about infertility because there's a praise report that I experienced when I started learning about, and I did hear them twice today, just to let you know. I'm talking about my cats, y'all, because they act very greedy, and Kevin get ready to feed them, and I fed them twice earlier today, and my cats are just spoiled like the children. <laughs> but anyways, um, a friend of mine, a co-worker, was experiencing fertility problems. She had been married for a couple years, and her and her husband were not able to get pregnant. She had did the IVF treatment, and she was just really struggling with it, you know, just really feeling the, the weight of, of um, not being able to get pregnant. She really wanted to get pregnant. And so that's when God started dealing with me because I had been very angry about how easily I could get pregnant. I was very frustrated by the fact that I was so fertile. And, um, and it, it also brought about a lot of anxiety into my life. So when I was sitting there listening to her say that, I started to realize that I was more blessed than I had even realized. Like, she had more money than me. She was able to do all of the things. She had the degrees and all of that that I was working towards was something I had that she didn't have. I was able to just get pregnant. And I didn't think much of it until I got exposed to her. So... That, that was a journey where I had to enlarge my tent and allow God to, to love on me and heal me in areas that I was very closed off on Him loving and healing me. So as I started to pray for her, for God to do something in her marriage, I, I read God put this, this particular scripture in my spirit. And this is one of the reasons why I went back to this. Because when I was thinking about tonight's call, this, this came to me. And... um. I went to her one day at work and I said, you know, how many rooms do you have in your house? And she was like, you know, we have, um, I think it was three rooms. And they had, all of the rooms were occupied. And I said, well, if you were pregnant, wouldn't one of the rooms be a nursery? And she said, yes. And I said, well, you need to go home and clean out that room and turn it into a nursery. And it took her a while to do it because... If you're going to enlarge your hood, if you're going to enlarge your territory, it's going to force you to be vulnerable. And it's going to force you to expose yourself to a potential disappointment. And that's with anything. Anytime you go after anything or try to do anything, you're putting yourself out there. You're exposing yourself to something. But you cannot enlarge your tent if you're not willing to do that. So the first time I told her, she was like, I don't know, Addie. I've already had a miscarriage. I don't know. I said, do you really want the baby? She said, yes. I said, do you believe that God can do it? She said, yes. I said, well, by faith, you create the nursery. Because that's your way of telling God that you're preparing for this baby that God, that you want. That you want and you feel like you're going to have. I said, so give God room to work. Enlarge your territory. And I, I want to say I gave her the scripture. I can't remember if I did or not. But I know I was standing on the scripture. Well, two years later, I was no longer working with her. Well, about a year later, I got pregnant with my Christopher. And she still hadn't gotten pregnant. And I was not planning to get pregnant with Christopher. So I was really depressed about it. And then God dropped her into my spirit. And then I started feeling guilty. Because I was depressed because I didn't want to be pregnant. I was upset with myself about that. And then, um, and then, um, I'm thinking about my friend who wishes she can be in my position. I'm like, I wish I could just switch this thing out and let her be. You know, I started like all of that or whatever. And then right after, I think, um, 
maybe right after I had Christopher or while I was pregnant, I found out that she was expecting. As she got pregnant and she did, she carried the baby full term and she had her son. And oh my God, I was so excited. And now I just, I'm excited because she has two children. Her second child just turned one. So her son is like a little bit younger than my Chris. And then her daughter is like one. And her daughter is like one years old. And, but she had to be vulnerable and she had to put herself out there and put that nursery there and walk past that nursery every day and believe God that a baby was going to eventually fill that room. She enlarged her tent. Where is God asking you to enlarge your tent right now? What type of investment do you need to make? Who do you need to call that you don't feel worthy of calling and tell them what you need from them? Who do you need to reach out to? That maybe you don't feel like you should. Maybe you don't have the degree for that thing. Maybe you don't have the experience. But God is telling you, I have given that to you. I have promised this to you. You got to do it. You got to go after it. Like he said, listen, burst in the song and shout, you who never bore a child. He did not say burst in and shout after you have the child. He said burst now because I'm telling you, I'm going to give you more children than the woman with the husband. I'm going to give you more children than the woman who could have babies. I'm going to make you more fruitful. But, and then what I found so amazing in verse 2 is when he says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Because, see, a lot of times we backpedal. It's like I'm doing too much. And I've done that. See, God is challenging me with this in my personal and professional life. God is, like I told y'all, personally, with my relationship with my mom, my relationship with my husband, my relationship with my children, enlarge my tent, my relationship with my friends, enlarging my tent. But even professionally, God wants me to step out to go after bigger, greater things. That's why I'm so excited about the event that's coming up this year, because this is going to be an annual event, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I know God is going to do something great with it. I want him to get the glory. I want women to feel love and care for. And I want them to not just feel it from me. I want them to realize that they have it within. And I want them to carry it out throughout their lives. That's why I do heart talk every Monday night. That's why I'm doing blogs. That's why I'm sending emails. That's why I show up and speak. That's why I do whatever I do. Because I want us to enlarge our tents. And, and, and when he said do not hold back, a lot of times we hold back. Because we're thinking, wow, this, this is enough. God is like, I haven't even gotten started yet. Enlarge your tent. He said, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. He said, your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. When you start to expand, the people that are in the way, God will move them out the way. There, there's nothing that's going to stop you but you. That's why you have to prepare. You have to prepare for that blessing. That's walking by faith. You have to go back to school and get that degree even if you don't feel like you're worthy of it. If God said that you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a doctor. Go back to school. Ask him to give you a plan. Ask him to show you how to enlarge your tent. Ask him to show you how to stretch your tents wide. And then lengthen your cords. And then when you start to get scared, remember this part. He says, I created the blacksmith. Who fans the coal into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. I did that. He said, and it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. So I created the blacksmith to make the weapon. And I created the person who's going to use the weapon to cause problems and chaos. But no weapon forged against you will prevail. And you who... What you doing? Oh, and you who ref and you who refute every tongue. Oh, excuse me. No weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The Lord commanded you to enlarge your tent. You didn't come up with this on your own. God is telling you to go after this thing. And I think that one thing we have to realize is we have to stop with this false sense of humility. It's pride. We have to stop thinking less of ourselves. That's pride. 
But it's it's called self preservation. We try to we think less of ourselves because we think by doing that we're protecting ourselves. No, we're not. People are going to talk about us and judge us regardless. We have to move forward. We have to ask God, where do you see me? Because I only see this little speck. But you're seeing this great mountain, and I'm missing it. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Would anyone like to share? You can press star six to unmute your phone. Star six. See, I just feel like many of us have been feeling barren, right? I don't have enough money for that. I don't have a degree for that. I don't have a husband. I don't have kids. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have, um, back to the money. That's one of the biggest things. I don't have money. I don't have good friends. I don't have this. I don't have a house. I don't have a car. I don't have this. I don't have that. But what do you have? Whatever you have, God is willing to use it. To make it bigger, to make it better, so that you can live a blessed life and bring honor and glory to his name. But my thing is, why do you see yourself as so barren? Let God start to deal with your perspective of who you are. Let God bless you how he wants to bless you. Don't limit him from blessing you because you don't think highly enough of yourself. Don't limit him from blessing you because it's uncomfortable and it's awkward. You're going to have to, enough, listen, if you catch yourself saying, oh, I don't eat food like that, or I don't do things like that. If you know you're not allergic to it, you need to enlarge your territory. If you don't eat sushi, I encourage you to go try some. All of it isn't raw. That's the first thing people tell me. I don't eat that. That stuff is raw. It's not all raw. Just try it. I thought I would hate it. When I ate sushi for the first time, I fell in love with it. I was like, this stuff is so delicious. How did I miss this all the time? I just use that as an example because people get it with food. But what about in your marriage or your relationship? And it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. It could even be with your siblings. If you know you have a sibling that is always a certain way, ask God to enlarge your territory, enlarge your tent. That might mean that you might have to love on them a different way. That might mean that you might have to love them from a distance. That you're not obligated to try to fix that. It's time for you to spread out. When people don't receive us, that's another thing he talked about in that sermon yesterday. We have to be willing to dust the dust off our feet, take our peace with us, and do it quickly. And I can tell you, I have stuck around in places where people didn't want me for a very long time. And then I felt bad when it was time for me to take my peace and my blessings with me. Because I wanted so bad for them to want me. I wanted so bad for them to support me and care about me. And give me the type of love and nurture and affection that I thought I was giving to them. God said, no, it's time to enlarge your territory. I'm going to send different kinds of people to bless you. I'm going to put you around different people. Expect to be uncomfortable. Expect to feel awkward. That's when you know you're enlarging your territory. It's going to look crazy. It's going to look crazy. I'm working on some things right now in preparation for what God is doing, is, go is going to do. I'm not so stuck in what's happening right now because I know what he's doing right now is a preparation for what's to come. I have to build a team. I have to put things together. God is putting people into my life because he's enlarging my territory. But he can't do but so much if I'm not willing to spread out and give him room to bless. But I have to be willing to enlarge that tent and look like a fool. Moses built that ark. I mean, Noah built that ark. And people laughed at him and teased him and ridiculed him. There's no rain. Why would you be building a boat? He was enlarging his territory. Expanding his hood. Why? Because God knew what was about to happen. But those people didn't. So we can't get caught up. Why would you be writing that book? Why would you buy that house? Why would you get that degree? You know you can't do this. You know you can't succeed. That's a white man's world. And all these other crazy things that I hear people say. No, as a man thinketh, so is he. Enlarge your territory. Apply for the promotion. You don't have to have the qualifications. Enlarge your territory. 
Tell that man how much you love him. Stop trying to hold back because you're trying to be so hard. You weren't even created like that. In larger territory. Be honest about how you feel with people. Stop being so hard and so so defensive. And, 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 and you wonder why people act like that with you. Because you, you present that. In larger territory. It's time to do something new. Do not hold back. You can do it. Why can you do it? Because he said, he said, lengthen your cord, strengthen your sticks. But you don't have to hold back because he says, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations. Dispossess meaning the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. That's another way of saying that. He's saying that you might look at that situation and it looks like somebody. Okay, I'm going to give you another example. If God told you that man was going to be your husband, he might be in a relationship right now. But if God told you. That was going to be your husband. Now, you don't go trying to make it happen yourself. But you sit back and work on enlarging your tent and making room for him to come. Because when he gets there, you be ready. If God told you he's going to give you a baby. And you've been having trouble with that. Make room. Start preparing. If God told you he was going to give you a house or pay off your house. Make room. Start preparing. What would that look like? If you don't know, ask him, Lord, what does it look like? What does it look like for me to enlarge my territory? That's an honest prayer. She's telling me to enlarge my hood. What am I saying? The people closest to you might not be the people who are going to help you or bless you. Like Bishop said yesterday, I thought this was so powerful. It was funny. Oh, my God, it was funny. But it was so powerful. He said, if I'm bleeding, I don't care if the doctor is black, white. Japanese, Australian, I just want him to stop me from bleeding. He said, check this, I don't even care if the doctor is an atheist. I just want him to stop me from bleeding. And we have to get like that. God can use any and everyone and any and everything to bless us. But many times we're not able to receive the blessing because we haven't made room for it. And not just physical room for it, mental, spiritual, emotional room for it to happen. If I think that I'm not worth anything, then I can't receive love. I can't receive more money and I can't receive more um, fun and fulfillment in my life because I have made my tent so small. So if you always struggling in a certain area, it's because your tent is tight and it's time for you to lengthen your cords and stretch out your curtains and make room like my friend did. My friend did go home and make that nursery. She did. She made that nursery before she got pregnant. And she was so scared to do it. She was scared to do it because what if she never got pregnant? Then she felt like she looked like a fool. You ever felt like that? You ever felt like you're making a fool out of yourself? You're never making a fool out of yourself when you're doing what God told you to do. Now, he said that what he tell you to do, well, well I mean, it'll, it'll make foolish the wise now. But, but if you go to the next chapter, Isaiah 55, he says, and I'm going to read it to you. Because it's so powerful. I mean, and then you're like, Adley, you want me to walk around looking like a fool. But this is what the Lord says about that. Verse 8, chapter 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay? So stop thinking so much. Stop saying, well, this doesn't make sense. And I don't see how this can happen. And I don't see how this can work. You shouldn't. It shouldn't make sense. He said, enlarge your tent, enlarge your tent. He said, apply for the job, apply for the job. He said, go back to school, go back to school. He said, don't go back to school, don't go back to school. He said, start the business, start the business. He didn't ask you how much money you have. He didn't ask you. What could, he just enlarge your tent. You got to live out of the box. I told y'all last week, we're not done with this living out of the box series. Like we, we have to like enlarge your tent. Anybody have any comments or questions? You can press star six to unmute your phone. Star six. I do feel in my spirit that somebody does has have something to say. 
Um, even if it's just you just saying how you know you have to do this and this was just a confirmation. Um, hello, mother. How are you? Thank you. Love you too. Thank you, Mommy. And I, I'm so glad Mommy just shared this now because I left that part out. Like, And I want to say this. When we talk about enlarging our territory, we have to... It, it, it's one of those things where it sounds like one thing is... It sounds like you're contradicting what you're saying, but it's like Habakkuk chapter 2 when he says the vision will not tarry. Wait, The vision will tarry. Wait for it because it will not tarry. It's because nothing really tarries in God. God already knows what's going to happen. But to us, it might seem like it's just not happening fast enough. And I remember one time I was like, me and my mama could never do the little girly, girly stuff. We don't get along. We fuss and fight too much. I don't even know I could be patient with her that long. And I surrendered that expectation. You know how you look at people? Like, we do this a lot in our relationships with our significant others. We'll say, you know, why doesn't he do me like this? I see so-and-so... They do this, you know, um, this husband does that. My husband doesn't do that. And, you know, I would say that, you know, I don't know if we'll ever be the type of mother and daughter to get up and go to, you know, breakfast and yard sales and stuff like that. And um, I just, I didn't, I wanted it though. And, um, but I wasn't even brave enough to say that I wanted it because I had such fear of it never happening. So it just seemed like it made it easier to act like I never wanted it. And... When she said that just now, like, we had that. Like, we, we had fun. We were getting dressed and doing all that cute stuff. I mean, it was fun. And then I realized that I had to let go of the... Ex I, I had to stop putting that expectation on her. Or oh, just because you're my mother, this is what we should do. No, I should say, I would like for this to happen. I'm okay if it doesn't. So I started working through that. I told her that. We talked about it before. I would journal about it a lot. But I would tell... I would just talk to God and say, you know... I can't even say I was praying for that. I just pray for our relationship to continue to get better. And I'm saying that, but here again, I had to enlarge my tent. I had to put myself in an environment where maybe the same things from before would seem like they would happen and just trust God to do something better. I just feel like many of us are missing out on life because of we just know the way things are and we just know how people are. But you have to enlarge what you think about these people. You have to expand what you think about yourself. And as you do that, the Lord can enlarge your territory. He can enlarge your hood. A territory. And we, and we have been told that we have authority over our territory. Okay? A territory is defined as... I'm just waiting for it to come up. A territory is defined as an area of land under the jurisdiction of a ruler or state. So if you if, if your area of land has been your let's say your state. I we have people calling from all over, but I'm gonna use my state. I'm South Carolina. South Carolina geograph, ge geographically and population is one of the smaller states, if I'm not mistaken. So if I use South Carolina as my territory, the Lord is telling me, I need you to expand. I, I need you to set out for North America being your territory. I need you to want to go over there and rule Europe and Asia and Africa. I want you to know the world is yours because I told you to expand your territory. And if somebody is already there, what does verse, um, what was it, verse 4 or 5, it told us, it told us, hey, 
Somebody might be there, but let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to cause them to get out, and then you're going to inhabit where they were. Back to the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. If you prepare yourself, that's what enlarging our territory is all about. That's what We get out of the box. How do we get out of the box? We have to prepare to do that. We don't just do it because that's our comfort zone. We have to prepare. We have to have things in place. So I just want to encourage you to ask God what does it mean in your life to enlarge your territory. What does that mean for you specifically? I've thrown out a lot of different examples and I may not have thrown out yours. But what does that mean? And, and as he answers you, you're going to have to walk by faith to lengthen your cords. You're going to have to walk by faith to decorate that room after you keep having these miscarriages or cannot get pregnant. And God is saying, I'm going to give you a baby. You're going to have to enlarge your territory to go back and get that degree after so-and-so told you you're too dumb and you failed this test and you failed that test. Enlarge your territory. Some people, it's a health thing. God said enlarge your territory. Don't just believe him that the pain can kind of go away but leave him for complete healing enlarge your territory that's not your sickness that is a sickness that's not your cancer that's cancer it's not yours that might be lupus but it's not your lupus it might be lupus that's in your body but it's not yours believe him for the healing Believe him for the breakthrough. Believe him that you are worthy of everything you could have ever dreamed and imagined times a hundred million. That's how great he is. And that's what he wants to do in our lives. But he can't do it if we're not willing to enlarge our hood. You know, your hood, your neighborhood, your community. If you could think of your life as your neighborhood and your community, think about your city. The Lord is telling you, I don't want you to just inhabit your house. I don't want you to just inhabit your street. That's the territory you have accepted. I want you to rule it all. All of everything I got for you. I want you to leave here empty. And the only way we're going to be able to leave here empty is if we are enlarging our hoods. We have to allow God to do this in and through us. Does anybody... Have any comments or questions before we get ready to close out? You can press star six to unmute your phone. Star six. Hey, Keisha. Hey, Tisha, how you doing? such a blessing that's such a blessing tisha i'm so thankful i just thought about you early today and then you happen to be one of the people who spoke tonight like look at god like i'm so happy to hear from you um and that's just even more confirmation of what he's doing in your life because as you know just think about this a little prayer and we just keep moving and we have to do that for each other so i'm just so thankful that this is confirmation for you. And I pray that 
for you and for all of us that as we move forward, we are asking him, what does this mean to enlarge my territory? You know, what does this mean for me? Like, God, show me. Let's, let's take the guesswork out of it. Just like Tisha just said, God told, God showed her this. And I'm just confirming it. And I believe God is stirring all of us up like that right now. So I just, I just thank you so much for sharing that, Tisha. And I'm just looking forward to you sharing even more testimonies about how God has blessed you as you um, begin to enlarge your territory. Is there anybody else that would like to share before we close out? You can press star six to unmute your phone. Well, I just want to thank you guys so much for being on tonight. I thank you, Mommy and Tisha, for sharing your testimony. And I just want to say, um, I, I try to do action steps, but the only action step I have for all of us is to be diligent about seeking God on what enlarging our hood looks like. What does enlarging your hood look like? Think about that. Ask Him to show you. And don't reject it when it comes. It's, I can promise you it's going to almost always be something you would prefer not to do. Let's just go ahead and put that out there. Don't be surprised. Don't say, oh, God is asking so much of me. You know different from everybody else. He set the tone with himself. He gave himself to save us. He called us to do the same. Jesus said that we will do greater things in his name than he did. And remember, he died for us. So some of the things that we go through in life, it's a part of the journey, but it's never meant to take us out. It's just meant to, um, meant to make us stronger and make us better. So I just want to encourage you where you are to take some time every day this week. And I encourage you to write it down. Don't type it. Don't text it. Get you a little composition notebook, a, a spiral notebook, a journal. But... Go ahead and at, write down what he puts in your spirit. Enlarge your territory. So I thank you ladies so much for being on tonight. Is there anyone that would like to share before we close out in prayer? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to be together and I thank you, Father, for sealing this word in our hearts. Whatever this means for us individually and collectively, Lord, I thank you right now for doing it, Lord. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the restoration. I thank you for the transformation that's taking place, Lord. I thank you for enlightenment. I thank you for revitalization. I just thank you for everything our heart stands for. I thank you, Lord, for the peace. I thank you for the the clarity. I thank you, Father, for the courage to walk by faith for each and every one of us. I thank you, Father, for giving us courage to open our hearts for you to love on us and nurture us and care for us the way we so desire, but the way we're so afraid of making ourselves vulnerable because we've been hurt. We've been disappointed. Many of us, by those who are closest to us, it was hard to believe that you really want to do this, but you do, and you love us, and just bless us to deal with what's making it hard. Bless us to be honest about the hard places in our heart. Anything that we're struggling with doing or hesitant to doing, it's, it's a sign of a hardening of our heart in that area. So, Lord, I just thank you. Like Ezekiel chapter 36 says in verse 26, that you're giving us a new heart and a new spirit to replace that heart of stone. You're going to give us a heart of flesh. And I thank you for doing it, Lord. I thank you for our divine heart transplant. I thank you for what you're doing. And I just thank you for blessing everybody under the sound of my voice and everyone attached to them i thank you for walking through their homes and walking through the workplace and walking through their families and walking through their relationships with you with themselves and with others lord and i just thank you for doing a healing restorative work father protecting um, their children and, and children's children protecting the loved ones that they have i don't care if their children have fur protect everyone Father, that they love, the things that they love, you love, and they care about, you care about. So bless them right where they are. And Lord, show all of us, Lord, I pray for miracles to take place. I pray that we can hold back our testimonies because of the wonderful things that you're doing, because we overcome by our testimonies. Lord, bless us to continue to share our testimony and learn more about your goodness. Bless your word to come to life in our lives. 
Give us a the hunger and desire to read, to study, to pray, to sit still and hear your voice. Lord, just, just give us that desire, even when we don't want to, even when our lives seem chaotic. Give us more peace. Bless us to say no as a complete sinner. Bless us to know when not to sacrifice ourselves, when, when we need to be restored and when we need to be um, sacrificial, Lord. Show us, Father. We thank you, we love you, and we praise your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all have a great night, and we'll be back on next Monday night. Don't forget, register for your Hearts That Shine, March 17th from 3 to 6. Love y'all.